Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today about the impossible dream. Now, I'm not talking about the dream that's impossible, but then God answers. Okay, that's an easy sermon. I want to talk to you about the dream that's impossible to answer. I want to talk to you about the process, the thought process, that's impossible for God to respond to. There's a place in your life where it is impossible for the Father to help you. Isn't that encouraging? I didn't get a lot of amens with that. I mean, not much shouting there. He cannot fill or fulfill your worries. He won't fulfill your worries. He will not respond to your worries and your anxieties. He won't. You're not going to worry God into acting in your life. Well, you know, if I worry about this long enough, God will finally do something. Just the opposite. That worry will literally separate you from God being able to answer that in your life. I'm going to show you this in the Word of God today. God will not worry along with you. Oh, yeah, I know you're, oh, man, I tell you, that troubles me too. Oh, I know you're worried about, I'm, I, I'm right there with you. I'm in there with you today. I'm worrying about that too. Are you kidding me? I don't think so. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. In fact, I, I, I want you to read this, and I want you to hold on to this because we're going to come back to it. Uh, later. In fact, if you let's start in verse 6. That'll save me some time later. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 6. The Amplified Bible says, Therefore humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. Now he's not talking. Okay, he hasn't stopped talking, all right? First Peter chapter 5. What are y'all laughing at? What is y'all's problem this morning? <laughs> first Peter, everybody say first Peter, first Peter. Chapter, five, chapter five, verse six, <laughs> Amplified Bible, Amplified Bible, okay, therefore, <laughs> humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he, listen to this, that in due time he may exalt you. Now, you know, we don't want to talk about exaltation because a humble person doesn't, but if you are a humble person, there is exaltation. So it works both ways. All right, but how do you do that? Casting all your care, the whole of your care, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all on Him. All right, now listen to this. All right, follow me. For He, listen carefully. For He cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Now see, listen. If all you do is hear the message, God cares about me, He cares for me, and you don't do what the first part of that verse says, you won't actually be able to receive that care. Doesn't mean God doesn't care. But if you want God working in your life, there's something that you as an individual believer must do. And I just want you to listen to me. You cannot be a worrier. You cannot have cares and anxieties and concerns in your life and still let that care work in your life. They are mutually exclusive. You get one, you don't get the other. But God loves me. God loves you, but listen to me. Do you want him working in your life? 
then you have to do what he says. He cares for you affectionately. He cares about you watchfully. But he will not overcome your worries unless you let him. Now, I want you to li listen. This is rampant in the body of Christ. Worries and anxieties and concerns and I mean, listen, it, it's ridiculous. I talk to people, and I talk to pastors, and you listen to them, you'd think the sky was falling. They're like chicken little. I mean, the sky, oh, my God. How do you know? Well, I, I watch the news. <laughs> you want anxiety, just watch the news. I don't know whether some of you follow me on Twitter, and I don't do a lot of that, but I did tweet out a, 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 a cool article off the news. And that's what I look for, you know, is cool things. And the article was about this young man who, who fell in the ice and, and drowned. And, and while he was there, they drug him out, and he was dead for 45 minutes. And they brought him to the hospital, and they were trying to revive him. And <clears throat> there was no pulse, no nothing. And his mother gets to the hospital. She walks into the room and she said, God, touch my son's heart by your Holy Spirit right now. Let it pump right now in the name of Jesus. A minute later, it started pumping. And he's totally normal today. That's good news. That's what I like to tweet. I like good news. But I'll tell you, if you're not careful, you will start carrying not only the burdens of your life, but the burdens of the world. Don't do that. It will get you nowhere. In fact, it will pull you down. Now, Jesus, let me just read you this, okay, so you'll know this is from Jesus, okay? I didn't say this. Jesus said it, okay? I like it when I can just say that. I don't, I don't have to interpret this. And the heading of this portion of Scripture in my Bible says, Do not worry. Okay? So listen to what Jesus said. Verse 25, Matthew chapter 6. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or your body, what you will put on. Now, the reason Jesus used those three is because at that time of life, in that, that place in life where he was ministering, those were the three primary things people worried about. What they were going to eat, what they were going to drink, and what they were going to wear, because they didn't have much. It's not like drinking water today. You can go to a public water fountain and drink pure water. So Jesus is dealing with where they are right now. And he said, do not worry about your life. And their life they had a problem because they worried about eating. They worried about food. They worried about their clothes, what they were going to wear. It's not like today, what we're worried about, what we're going to wear. You know, oh, do I wear the red or the green? Do I wear this or do I wear that? No, they meant, am I going to have something to put on? So Jesus just told them, listen to this. Don't worry about your life, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap. Gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his statue? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and, and they neither toil nor spin. 
Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God clothes the grass which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, don't worry. Now here's the other part of this, and I don't have time to get into this. It says, don't worry saying. You know, most of the problem with your worrying is, is you start speaking it out of your mouth, and the minute you start speaking it out of your mouth, you start attracting it. At least if you keep your mouth shut, it's just between you, but, but even that's not good for your physical health. But don't say it. What shall we eat? What shall we wear? Jesus said all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient is the day for the trouble of the day. Now, the Lord showed me something about this last verse a few years, a number of years ago now. Have you ever known anybody, it just seemed like they're going along and then all of a sudden, I, I hate to use this phrase, but I don't know any other way to say it, all hell breaks out in their life. Everything that could go wrong goes wrong. Do you know that most of the times those, those types of people have worried that into their lives? They have actually brought tomorrow's trouble and day after tomorrow's trouble and the next day's trouble into their life at one time because they're worrying about all of it. And it attracts. And it normally doesn't come with an event. It comes with everything. I understand an attack of the devil. I understand when you have a problem. But when everything, something's wrong because that's not normal life. Usually, if you get around those people, you're going to hear them say, see, I told you that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. I've been thinking about that and worrying about that. And see, I told you. When just the opposite is true. I read this quote. This one man said this. He said, I guarantee you worrying works. Because everything I worry about never happens. It's not the way it works. In fact, it's just the opposite. It attracts. Jesus said, don't worry. You can't worry. I, I love these quotes. I, I found these um, a couple of years ago about worry, and, uh, and I, thought they were pretty, I thought they were pretty good. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, it empties today of its strength. Worry just saps your strength, sucks it out of you. Don't worry if you're a kleptomaniac. You can always take something for it. <laughs> Don't worry about the world coming to an end today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. There are two days in the week on which I never worry. One is yesterday, and the other is tomorrow. People get into the habit of worry that if you save them from drowning and put them on a bank to dry in the sun with hot chocolate and muffins, they wonder whether they're catching cold or not. I like what Benjamin Franklin said. Don't accept trouble or worry about uh, what may never come. Keep in the sunlight. Amen. Stay in the light. Dale Carnegie said this. You probably don't know him either, do you? I didn't think so. <laughs> Different generation. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm picking on you today, Jake. You just... <laughs> 
You just asked for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> he can take it. He's a man. He can handle it. <clears throat> Blunt's just happy I wasn't talking about him. Okay. <laughs> Listen to this. If you can't sleep, then get up and do something instead of lying there worrying. It's the worry that gets you, not the loss of sleep. <laughs> the art of resting the mind and the power of dis is and the power of dismissing from it all care and worry is probably one of the secrets of energy in great men. You can lay it aside. Stop worrying about the potholes in life and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Tommy Lasorda, who was coached for the Los Angeles Dodgers, said this. I like this. The only way I'd worry about the weather is if it snows on our side of the field and not theirs. Here's, my, here's one of my favorites. Worry is a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all other thoughts are drained. That's what worry can do. Boy, that's good. Same person said, it ain't no use putting up your umbrella till it rains. Worry is interest paid by those who borrow trouble. Listen, even the world knows and have, have seen that worry can hurt your life. But when you are a child of God, I want you to listen to me. You've got to deal with it. Because it literally will hinder God's work in your life. He, he, he cannot do what he wants to do in your life if you're consumed with worry because basically you're telling him, I got this. Got what? I'm worrying about it. I'm anxious about it. Hey, listen, I'm not pointing my finger. I'm not immune to this. I just found out here recently that I might have a real blessing coming in my life, okay? Real blessing. And I caught myself the other night laying around worrying about whether the blessing was going to come, and if it did, what was I going to do about it? Are you kidding me? No. If it comes, it's a blessing. If it doesn't, I didn't have it anyway. You can't allow, listen to me, you can't allow yourself to get caught up and consumed with anxieties in your life and trouble, and where you're constantly concerned and worried. Well, I'm just worried about this. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about my finances. I'm worried about it. Is any of that going to do any good? No. The Word of God is so clear. Listen, it is not a natural state of human life, nor is it necessarily good or positive when you worry. Worry is just an automatic habit of thinking and responding to certain events in your life. It is produced by specific thoughts and behaviors that get triggered automatically inside our bodies. The more you do it, the worse it's going to get. Now, I, I, I use her as an example. She's in heaven, so I hope she's not mad at me. But Becky's grandmother was a world-class worrier. I mean, listen, she, could, she was a world-class worrier. One time she called Becky worried, just fretting, and, you know, just sad, and I don't know what to do. I'm so worried about Sam, and he's in the Philippines, and, and, and I'm so worried about him. And Becky said, well, why are you worried about him? Well, they're bombing in Libya. Becky said her, her, her nickname was Sabi. Maybe that's a good nickname for her. She said, Sabi, that's halfway around the world. 
I know, but you never know. It didn't soothe her a bit. You, listen, listen. You've got to make up your mind. I am not going to allow worry, cares, and anxiety to control my life. I'm not going to let that be a part of my life because it's, listen, it literally separates you from what God can do in your life. It's a false dream. It's a false imagination. And it's not of God. The, it literally, the word that, that I've been reading here to you literally means dividing through the idea of distraction. Your worries divide you and separate you and distract you from what the real answer to your problem is. It's more than just a mental exercise that you do. It is a distraction. And it will keep you away from the answer that you need in your life. So you have to say, wait a minute. Hold it. I'm not going to do that. It will literally divide you from the Word of God. The Word means distracting care, separating care. Jesus talked about this in Mark chapter 4. I'm not going to read all this, but you can write this down. Verse 18, and Jesus is talking about a parable. He's talking about the sower sowing the Word of God, and he sows the, the Word in different soil. One of the places he sows it, and I'm going to use this terminology, in the weeds, okay, in the briars, in the thorns. And the Bible says that, that, the, that he sowed that among the thorns, and they heard the word, but now notice this. It says that, that something choked the word, and it became unfruitful. The first thing that Jesus lists that chokes the word and causes it to come un become unfruitful is cares, anxieties, worries. Chokes the word and makes it unfruitful. You know what the word of God says, but it does not produce anything in your life. That's what worry will do for you. So that means for a believer, it is extremely dangerous. And see, it's really... A challenge for me today because I'm trying to preach the word to you, but if you're sitting there worrying about something that's going to take place after lunch or tomorrow or next year, and you're totally distracted. You can't get it. You need to kind of slap yourself and say, wait a minute, listen. You catch yourself drifting off into imaginations and none of them are good. then you need to come back to the Word of God. It literally chokes the Word of God's ability to produce in your life. Listen to me a minute. The voice of the Word of God and worry do not abide in the same place. You cannot hear from God and worry at the same time. I know this sounds harsh, but he will not respond to your worry. Oh, I know they're worried about this. I'm going to just come down right now and I'm going to just appear to them so they won't worry. No, it ain't going to happen. Because Jesus said just the opposite. You have to stop it. You have to deal with it in your life. Proverbs 12, 25 says in the New Living Translation, worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. You've got to decide which way you're going to go. If you're worrying, it puts you in the, your focus in the opposite direction of the things of God. Really, to be honest with you, worrying is the opposite of trusting God. Now, a believer would never say, oh, no, 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 I'm trusting God, but I tell you, I'm just so worried about little Johnny. I don't know what to do. Well, what's wrong? Well, I don't know. I'm just worried. What are you worried about? Something could happen.
You know, a meteor could strike the earth. But I'm not going to spend a whole time, a lot of time worrying about it. I hope I'm getting through to you today. Because you've got you to you hit this hard in your life. Listen, even in my ministry life, there have been times in my life in the past where I have gotten consumed by anxiety. It's an ugly place to be. It's ugly for you. And I can tell you, in my case, you can ask my wife, nobody wants to be around you. Nobody likes you. When you're fretting and anxious and, oh my God, here comes gloomy Gus again. I don't want to be around them. Don't look at me so holy like you hadn't avoided people like that before. <laughs> Let me show you a scripture that will help you with this in Luke chapter 10. Very familiar scripture to believers, okay? I mean, if you've, you've heard this many times, I'm sure. In, in Luke chapter 10, verse 38, it says that Jesus entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. Martha was distracted. Now listen. Today we can judge Martha pretty, Martha pretty harshly and, and we can say, well, I tell you, she just didn't choose right. Well, she didn't, but listen, there are a lot of you that may have not made the right choice under the same pressure she was under. She had a house full of guests. It was her house. She was the one that was going to have to cook supper for them. She's asking them, oh, do you need some water? Can I get you a cup of coffee? Do you need something? Can I help you with something? It was her house. She felt responsible. She felt like it was her obligation. But the point that you need to hear is she was distracted. All right, now here's the thing you need to see out of this. So Martha, as she was distracted here, she came to Jesus. And here's the thing that you need to hear. She said, Lord... Don't you care? Lord, you got to pick up this worry with me. You've got to be anxious with me. You ought to be fretting over the fact that my sister's not at work either. You need to join in with me. Don't you care? You know what Jesus said? Martha, you're worried. And troubled about many things. Martha, you're distracted. You're worried. You're missing the point, Martha. It isn't about your sister. And no, I'm not going to worry with you about this. This is not about your sister. You are distracted. You are worrying. And there's only one thing that's needful in this situation, Mary. And Mary, Martha, and Mary has chosen that good part. Nobody would have cared, nobody would have been upset if Martha had sat down there beside her sister to listen to the Word of God. My guess is that Jesus would have said, all right, now let's all fix supper. We'll all do it. We'll all, listen, we need Martha's. I, I love that Martha spirit. But when it gets to the point where it distracts you from the Word of God, come on, come on. then you've gone too far. Amen. We've had that happen uh, in ministry here. Like, you know, I just use it as an example. Like in the nursery or in the children's ministry, people are over there and they're working and they're taking care of your kids and they're serving. And, but, but the problem is, if they get distracted from the Word of God and their real purpose, the next thing they're going to do is they're going to get upset with you because you're not over there helping them. And I know this sounds crazy, but no amount of consolation is going to help that. They've got to quit worrying. 
they got to let go of it. You have to let go of it. You can't, you can't allow that to, to control your life. It will, con- it will destroy your life. You, get in that, you can get in that pattern of being anxious, and it will keep you away from what God has for your life. It will distract you and separate you from your answer in your life. I don't know how much more practical in the Word of God you can get than this. Okay, uh, We've been having some staff meetings, and we're trying to improve what, everything at the church and look at ways we can do things better. And, and we have a saying, well, what is low-hanging fruit? In other words, what can we do right now? You know, what can we do right now? This is a low-hanging fruit of Christian life right here. This is what you need to be doing now. Paul gave us the the simplest, plainest understanding of what we're to do in Philippians chapter 4 in verse 6. Go over there with me. Philippians chapter 4 in verse 6. I think I'm going to read you this out of the Amplified Bible as well. All right, now listen. Verse 6, Philippians chapter 4. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything. Is that clear? Anything. Okay. Now now listen to this because this is how you can do this. But in every circumstance and in everything. All right, so you got it? You don't worry, have anxiety, cares about anything, but in how many circumstances? Every circumstance. Okay, that means you're going to have to take time to do this. Worrying is easy. You can do that while you're doing other stuff. This takes time. In every circumstance and in everything, here's what you do. Prayers and petitions with thanksgiving make your wants known unto God. Prayers and petitions, that word means definite request, with thanksgiving. Continue to make your wants known to God. This is an ongoing process. you got something that starts to worry. You say, hold on, I'm going to deal with this. Lord, here's what I'm worried about. The word prayer here is a very interesting word, okay? The word means to pour out. I I want to use another word, unload. Have you ever unloaded on God? I have. God, here's the deal. I've screwed up. This is a mess. And if if something doesn't change, this is going to happen, and I'm worried about it, and i got to get this out of my life. I ain't no business worrying, and i just got to get rid of this, and, Lord, I'm just going to pour out to you. Jesus did that in the purest form possible in the Garden of Gethsemane. That was a pouring out prayer. Lord, I don't really want to do this. If there's another way, nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. He's pouring out. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that, but you can't stop there. You had not solved anything. All you've done is worry to God. A lot of people do that. They're not praying to God. They're worrying to God. The next part is so critical because it says definite request. In other words, there's a solution to your problem. There's a solution to your anxiety. And what you need to do is see that solution and ask for that solution. And then spend the rest of your time thanking God. Giving thanks unto God. That will, that will release you from that care. And the minute it tries to come back, just start thanking Him again. And it just goes away. It just abates. It just goes away. And here's one of the most phenomenal things that can happen. I've experienced this so many times in my life that, that I'll tell you, you get a taste for it. It's just so wonderful. The next verse. Listen to what it says. And God's peace, ooh, I like that. 
God's peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount guard over your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I, I, listen, I face some pretty challenging things in my life. I face my, my daughters and my wife uh, uh, in critical condition in an emergency room. I know what it's like to have to worry, but I also know what it's like when you take this step right here and you make your petition known unto God and you give Him thanksgiving. There is a supernatural peace that comes on you. I'm tell, I ha, Listen, when Becky and them were in the hospital, I had people asking me, aren't you worried? No. They almost got mad at me like, well, you don't care. I do, but I'm not going to worry. I'm telling you, a peace came over me. It's, it, it's almost, it, it, it's beyond understanding. I can't explain it to you. It just comes on you and you know, you're, it's just like you're in a cocoon and all these things are going on around you that would, would normally would be instigators of worry and, and instigators and prod you into being fretful and to being anxious and you're just sitting there saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. I glorify you. I just want to thank you today. That is real, folks. That is God's way of protecting us, of helping us. And then the good news is you get what you prayed for instead of what you worried about. It belongs to you. God wants to do it. No wonder he said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, <laughs> humble yourself. Under the mighty hand of God, that in due time, he'll exalt you. Hey, do you understand that? When, when you do, this is humbling yourself. Worry is really pride in disguise. You think you can do something, or at least you can worry, and that's profitable. It's not profitable. It's not profitable in any way, shape, or form. So the Lord says, uh, just come under my authority. Submit to me. Humble yourself. Let me handle this. I'll take care of it in due time. You'll exa be exalted. I'll get you out of this. I'll lift you out of this. Here's how you do it. You cast the care. The whole of your care. All your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns. Now here it is. This is a faith statement. Once and for all. Don't go back to it. On Him. Why? Because He cares for you. He cares for you. Affectionately. And He watches over you. So you have to make up your mind. Listen, this is really a value thing, okay? Do you ever understand this? This, this really helped me personally. God used, a, you know, used the flowers and he used the birds and, 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 and Jesus said, aren't you of more value than that? Do you understand your value to God? He sent his son to die for you. G gave up his son. To die for you. Spared not his own son for you. How much more with him will he freely give you all things? That's your value. You're valuable to him. So he cares for you. But listen, there are certain things that you have to deal with and you have to do yourself. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Roll your works on the Lord. Commit and trust them to him. And he'll even cause your thoughts to become agreeable with his will. Isn't that good? My, this scripture really helped me a lot in, in, in one of my times of struggle. In Psalm 55, verse 22, it says, Cast your burden on the Lord. Release the weight of it. And he will sustain you. Now listen to the value here, okay? He will never allow the righteous to be moved, to made to slip, fall, or fail. That's the value that you have. He will sustain you in your life 
All you have to do is make up your mind. I'm going to cast all my cares, all my worry, all my anxiety, all my concerns. I'm going to go to him with it. And I'm going to pour it out. And then I'm going to say, now, Lord, I need a solution. I'm asking you to deal with this. And I'm walking away from it. I'm not going, I'm not going to worry about it. It's like, like we said earlier. If you can do something about it, do something about it. But if you can't, then leave it alone. Just leave it alone. And turn it, listen, you don't just say, well, I just turned this over to you, Lord. No, you go to him with prayers and petitions and thanksgiving. There has to be, there's a specific. He will sustain you. Here's another name some of you probably won't know, but I'm going to say it anyway. Mahatma Gandhi said this. There is nothing that wastes the body like worry. And one who has any faith in God should be ashamed to worry about anything whatsoever. That's pretty strong. But really, that's where we ought to live our lives. That's where we ought to function every day. Right there. Are you going to have the opportunity to worry? Sure. There's a lot of stress on our lives. There's a lot of pushing on our lives. And that's, that, is a, that is a entrance for worry. But you'd be amazed at how much stress you can just throw off just by a simple prayer to your Father. Just simply say, Lord, I cast this over on you. You handle this. You'd be amazed at what God can do. I, I got to tell you, I've experienced this so many times in my life. It's the, it's the most wonderful thing in the world to not have to worry. Be fretful, anxious. It's wonderful. And it's for every believer. It's not for some super spiritual person. It's for anybody who will cry out to God, who will say, Lord, I turn this over to you. Lord, I ask you to handle this. And I'm not going to worry about it anymore. He takes care of it. He responds. He sustains. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to do something a little bit different today in our closing. I'm going to ask our prayer partners to go ahead and come up here right now. I, I'm going to do something a little different today. I felt prompted of the Holy Spirit to do this in this service. Now, I'm not trying to embarrass you today. Nobody's going to know, but I feel in my spirit that there are people that are here today and you are weighed down. You are struggling. You are weighed down. You, there is anxiety in your life. I got the perfect stress reliever. It's your Heavenly Father. What I want you to do today if that's you, and I'm going to ask everybody just to stand up. Don't leave, just stand up. You're going to hinder somebody if you start moving out. So just stand up with me. I'm going to ask you right now, if that's you, and you say, I, I, I need this burden lifted off of me today. I want you to slip out of your seat, and I want you to come right up here to the front right now while these prayer partners are here. And say, pray, pray with me right now. You say, well, people are going to know. They already know. They can see it on your face. Don't, don't. The good news is you can be free of it today. But you got to make up your mind when you walk out these doors, you're not worried about it anymore. No more. No more. No more. Rosie, come pray for this lady right here. Thank you, Lord. Father, we worship you. We glorify you. Right. Sweetie, they're going to show you right down there. Go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Father, thank you for burdens being lifted today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that we're not going to worry. We're going to trust you. 
You're going to bring peace into every mind. You're going to mount guard and garrison over those minds in the name of Jesus and work your power in their lives. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I'm going to have Paul come and dismiss you tonight, today and pray over you. Becky and I will be in the guest center if you're a guest this morning. We'd love to meet you. Those that are praying, just stay and pray. It's okay. If you need prayer today, come down here. After they get through, they'll pray for you. They're good prayers. They know what to do. Hallelujah. Paul.